It's 4.30 in the morning and we're searching for ghosts on the streets of Beijing. Li Yanbo is one of them. A businessman from the industrial northwest, he's now one of China's spiritual refugees. Forced from their homes by suspicion and fear, they live day to day, hand to mouth. We're hoping to find them before they rise and move on, one step ahead of the authorities. Amazingly, we discover some members camped under the government's nose at the gates of a national ministry. If the authorities knew of their presence, we could all be detained. Confused and frightened, they don't know exactly why they're here or what they're going to do. It's taken us weeks to find anyone prepared to talk openly. They claim they threaten no one, but China's authorities disagree. The leadership says it will spare no effort to crush the movement it calls an evil cult known as Falun Gong. At daybreak, millions of Chinese head to the park for a ritual known as Qigong. It's gentle exercise which calls upon a kind of invisible energy to strengthen body and mind. There are hundreds of types of Qigong based on traditional Chinese beliefs. But one brand you won't find here is Falun Gong. Exercise aside, its philosophy describes a unique view of the universe known to believers as the Great Law or Falun Dafa. Its creed, truth, benevolence and forbearance. Falun Gong's founder, Li Hongzhi, emerged from obscurity in China's industrial northeast to reveal what he calls the law of the universe in his 1992 book, The Zhuan Falun. The doctrine involves self-improvement and, say followers, the answers to life's mysteries. Master Li's mystical repertoire includes implanting a Falun, or wheel, in the abdomen of each practitioner so cultivation can continue even after physical exercise stops. Until a few years ago, Master Li was fated by China's official Qigong Association. During one convention, he gave a sample of his supernatural healing powers. It's unclear why Master Li left China in 1996 but he now lives in the United States, a reclusive figure who conveys his thoughts to practitioners via the internet. 
from his outpost in New York, Master Lee claims a legion of 100 million devotees, most of whom hang on his every word. But unlike other Qigong groups, this one doesn't tolerate criticism. This is the man who incurred the wrath of Falun Gong. When Professor He wrote that the sect could mentally impair young people, members staged a sit-in at the university which published the article. Dozens of practitioners were dragged away by police and beaten up. Undeterred, they returned with a bigger protest. Ten to twenty thousand practitioners quietly surrounded Beijing's most sensitive government building, the Central Leaders' Compound. It was an eerie sight, a silent, almost motionless protest. But for the government, it was an outrageous act of defiance. In the months ahead, police rounded up hundreds of suspects. Practitioners who were also party members were forced to renounce their allegiance to the sect and to denounce Master Li. Then came a nationwide crackdown on superstition, pushing devoted practitioners underground. Such is the hysteria surrounding the crackdown, we traveled to Hong Kong, the only place in China where Falun Gong devotees can practice in the open. Devotees like Belinda Pang looked on helplessly as the crackdown intensified on the mainland. The overall propaganda uh, are based on fabricated evidence in China, and only the government has their way of saying. And all the practitioners, there are 100 million practitioners in China, or probably more than that. They don't get a chance to, to speak out. They don't get a chance to appeal. They don't get a chance to express their opinion. Belinda Pang became a practitioner two years ago. Since then, she says, she's rid her body of illness and disease, raised her moral standards, and now faces problems more positively. The Dafa, or Great Law, has become her creed, Master Li, her teacher. Master Li, he knows something, he knows a lot of things that we don't know. And that's why he's someone very special. Is uh, it a what belief? If, um, it, you can call it a belief, but it's, it's not just a belief, okay? This is the universal law, the, the law of the universe, first time revealed to, to us. And we can, uh, by understanding, by reading Duan Falun, we can, it, it teaches us how to cultivate, how to return to our original self. Never too small to practice Falun Dafa. As Belinda yeah, Pang know, and so other devotees follow the leader and his thoughts on the internet, less back Chinese on the mainland, a different mm -hmm. message has been filling them. television they screens. In an intensive propaganda blitz, Chinese television has accused Falun Gong of contributing to the deaths of 700 practitioners in the most gruesome of circumstances. One man even tried to cut out the mystical wheel from his stomach. The government's message, Falun Gong is a dangerous obsessive devotion, a threat to followers and to social cohesion. 
and that's made Sumanan a man in demand. He's China's top cult buster. I if Falun is a dangerous obsession, Sumanan is just as obsessed in his crusade to crush it. Every waking hour is spent taking his message to each rung of Chinese society, debunking the mystical devices and tricks of the mind deployed by Master Li. <laughs> He uses not magic, but a simple act of strength to show how the minds of Falun Gong followers can be bent as easily as a spoon. Oh. Hayo. In the heat of the crackdown, we tried to convince frightened practitioners to reveal their side of the story. Our first contact was harassed into silence. The second was detained. It's a measure of how frustrated yet determined they are that this group of people finally came forward to speak out. Middle class, educated, they determined to have their good names restored. They determined to have their good names restored. They determined to have their good names restored. If Falun Gong remains banned, says Li Yanbo, he and millions of others can never again live a normal life. Because we think我们做的是非常正的，我们走的也非常正，是不是？我们都在这个世上，我们都做好人，为什么还要被抓？是不是？为什么要把我们就是非得要说成是邪教也好，歪理邪说？ They are China's new spiritual dispossessed. Millions of once law-abiding citizens are now faced with a difficult choice, relinquish their belief or risk persecution. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>